welcome to In-Depth. I'm DK Roster. It is always a good time to have a UWI conversation, especially when tying it into practical life around us. Now, Professor of Marine Biology, Head of the Life Sciences Department at the UWI, Professor Judith Gobin, joins us now. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Gobin. How are you doing? Hi, fine, very well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on the program. It's really our pleasure. Now, for, for good and for ill, there's a lot of conversation about the, the sea and its depths now. But in terms of like just asking you to give us an over, opening salvo about the importance of the deep sea, where, take mm. us on that journey, thank you. Absolutely. And um, what is, of course, in the news is um, the, the, the depth of the deep sea today, um, the, the sub that is actually missing, as most people are probably aware of, and that they're trying to rescue off, um, of the location where the Titanic is. Um, it's really, it's over 6,000 meters, um, and it is, the, it is dark. Um, the, it is uninhabitable, really, um, to a large extent. It is also not easy to find one's way around. So um, we are hoping that these, the, it will be a rescue mission and that it, it will all end safely. But having said that, it is a un, really a, a, a stressful environment. Um, there is no light, um, as I mentioned before. It is difficult for animals to find a mate um, in this environment. It is extremely cold. The pressures are extremely high. So really, it's not an environment where obviously humans can um, survive for any length of time. And that is why we go, um, we travel through time capsules, really um, using remotely operated vehicles and, of course, um, cameras and so on. The deep sea is extremely important because it is a it provides a lot of resources for us. It provides uh, some deep sea fishery. It provides a, a, a host of, although I said it's quite uninhabitable, there are areas in the deep sea that are actually habitable because the, it is at these areas where you might have some release of gases from the inner core of the earth. For example, methane and hydrogen sulfide, and that's where you will have a number of microorganisms living. So the inhabited areas are generally areas where there is some sort of vent or seep. And having said that, it becomes a very rich environment. So it's really half and half. It's um, some areas that are just plateaus and plateaus of nothing. But then they, we stumble upon very rich environments which have contributed to a large extent to the huge biodiversity knowledge that we have now of the deep sea. And having said that, we really only know a small amount of it. We only know about 5% of the deep sea. There is a lot more to be discovered. And you say that, and this reminds me of a conversation that I had once with an aquanaut who was actually submerged uh, two weeks at a time, two weeks at a time. But to the person who isn't the professor, to the person who isn't the aquanaut, bring that home in terms of why is it that important that we have an idea of some of the things that happens in the depths of the sea? And why, why is it important that there's this new biodiversity treaty? And what, what does this mean for us generally, and I guess specifically here in Trinidad and Tobago? Absolutely. It's really important because, as I mentioned, we didn't know enough about it. So now that we have an opening, and this came about in 2013 and 14, when I was fortunate to have gone aboard the EV Nautilus, and my colleague, uh, Diva Amon, and myself, we were really very pleased to see the huge diversity of organisms that are would really in our, our backyards. It was the first amazing videography reveal of what we have, the types of organisms. Now, the richness of organisms it becomes very important because these are often 
and and the we are actually in the process of um, documenting scientifically the information. Many of these species are new. That means new to science, never before been discovered or reported on or described. So this is significant because it's important that we appreciate the knowledge of biodiversity, what we have in our own environments. Um, and at the same time, these we need to appreciate the significance of these kinds of um, communities within ecosystems like the deep sea. So the deep sea provides resources. I mentioned some of the um, deep, well, for example, the deep sea fishery. Um, it provides the other resources like um, the, we have minerals in the deep sea as well. But when we talk biodiversity, we're talking those organisms that may have the potential for extracting uh, important chemicals from them, what we do is we take them into a lab and we extract the key basis that they're made of, the, the sort of biochemical structures, the genetic components. And it is these components that are used in the manufacture of drugs and pharmaceuticals, um, including you know, cancer-saving drugs and so on. So the, it, there is that huge, what we call marine genetic resource potential and that is really one of the key things that we need to be really looking towards the deep sea for. Now, we're not seeing this in isolation because we know this, it already exists. But for years, until very recently, with this biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction, the treaty that you referred to, for many years, the market was controlled by developed countries because as you would expect, they have the facilities, they have the technological know-how, they have the human resources to do and to carry out the work that is associated. And it's quite expensive really, the, the, the work, the field of biotechnology and genetic resources. So we are now getting into it. And what this new treaty, I'm very, very pleased to see that, you know, it. I, I was part of it with a number of CARICOM colleagues. We contributed to the negotiations, the science behind it. Um, the CARICOM team was extremely vocal in that we need to protect what's in our backyard. The, the, it, be, beyond, the nas beyond national jurisdiction is outside of the ex exclusive economic zone. It is really then common heritage of mankind. It's kind of open access, really. So territories like ours need to protect the these proximal areas because they are valuable to us. We have noticed um, there are often endemic species, that is species that only are found in these particular areas. We know that there are endemic species in the deep sea in our own backyard as well. So we want to protect it and that's what this treaty does. But at the same time, it encourages wise use of the deep sea and its resources. It doesn't mean that one stops all activity. What we need to do is encourage wise use. And that includes the small island territories like ours, like the Caribbean, like Trinidad and Tobago, getting involved in these um, new options and the potential that awaits us in the deep sea. And in the two minutes we have before we go to the break, Professor Gobin, getting involved in new options. Explain to me, give me a little idea, a little insight, please, how you actually decided, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to school to do, this is what I want to get involved in, because you don't necessarily see that amount of one women uh, in terms of science, the way you're doing what it is you're doing. So give, give me a little insight. What are those factors that came together so that we were able to have this conversation now? Sure. And um, I think, you know, I'm very proud to say that I am a game changer of the University of the West Indies. Um, the University of the West Indies, at this moment, we have a program that we're calling, G it's a campaign, of game changers, investing in your future. What we want to do is to encourage applicants to the university to come and invest in their futures because this is where it can all happen. It happened for me. I'm very pleased to say that I did 
an undergraduate degree at the University of the West Indies here at the St. Augustine campus. And then I went to a very exciting job at the Institute of Marine Affairs. That was when I was armed with a biology degree out of the St. Augustine campus. And then while at the Institute of Marine Affairs, I was working, doing some marine research in benthic ecology. That is organisms that are living in the sediment, um, the bottom of the sea, basically. And these tiny organisms, which are all mainly the microscopic ones I was looking at, they are key to the ecosystem. They are actually the base of the food chain. When you see fish feeding on the bottom sediments, this is what they're eating. So if the benthos is missing, or if it is affected by pollution, and you know just other activities that cause degradation then there will be that gap in the food chain basically and we will have less fish and therefore it goes all the way up the the food chain so marine ecology understanding marine biology was was very important to me at the time and then i decided to do an mphil or master of philosophy degree at the university of the west indies again at the saint augustine campus using the research that i was doing applying that research and you know formulating a good research questions that i used in towards completion of the master of philosophy degree and really, um, that was a game changer. It changed, it opened up a world of marine science for me, and not only locally, but globally. I went on to do a PhD at um, Exeter University in the UK. And from there, really, it was a number of stepping stones to with different meetings where you open yourself, you know, meetings with different colleagues, international opportunities, they come your way once you have this good grounding that I am I encourage new applicants to come to the university. This is where you can get the similar type of grounding that I got so that I could then compete on a global scale. Definitely looking at that light rising out of the West, speaking with game changer Professor Judith Gobin. We return to this conversation. Uh, stay with us. We come back with more. Welcome back. We are speaking with Professor Judith Gobin and like the benthos that she studies, building that conversation from the ground up. And uh, Professor, there's one thing, so different spaces, it seems sometimes as though having different careers, studying different things makes sense. So like in Central America, archaeology feels like a living subject because there are the Maya temples and these things that you can actually go and take a look at and study. This is a living something as opposed to just being uh, theoretical. Looking at new organis organisms that you spoke about before, what does it feel like to say, yes, I'm in the field, yes, I'm doing the work, but actually having something named after you? La Melibrachia, Judy Gobini. What, 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 what does that feel like in, from a personal and then a scientific standpoint? Well, it feels really good at a personal level, as you can imagine. It means that globally I am recognized for having done an you know, amazing amount of work, especially in the field of the benthic ecology and knowledge of marine biodiversity. So I'm really, really thrilled about that. At the same time, it means, and, and I really want young applicants to UWI to recognize it, that you can actually keep, change the game by literally coming through the university. We are now, um, we are in the top 1.5% of global universities. And you can start really by getting a first degree that's of interest. It is, it's as I did, we did a lot of field work. We were out on uh, marine sampling trips. We were out in the forest. We were out on a lot of environmental um, areas in Trinidad and Tobago, the forest, where we learned the practical nature of doing the work. We were exposed to the practical as well as the theoretical aspects. So for me, 
it means it is quite significant because it means um and and in the the words of the the vice chancellor the university is rooted ready and rising as a uwi graduate two de- from having had two degrees from the university i am rooted in the caribbean we've all we are always ready to accept a challenge and then we continue to rise as to some extent I've done with the new species being named after me. And we have about three and a half minutes, but that, that rootedness within a Caribbean perspective or reference point, I want just to talk a little bit about that in addition to, I think there are two recruitment opportunities that are taking place. Right. But I think sometimes when people hear UE or think university, they think, okay, well, it's just going to be airy-fairy academics or airy-fairy uh, theory. Um, Speak to that melding or that blend, please, being able to deal with academic rigor while grounding that in practical, functional use that helps to benefit the space that you're operating in and, and for. Thank you. Absolutely. So we have moved away from the old, you know, as we said long ago, the, the sort of chalkboard and teacher. We, are, we tend to interact more with our students. And as you know, the online world has opened up for globally. And this is how we engage our students. So it's a combination of online and one-on-one, so, um, you know, face-to-face teaching experience that one will be, one will have the experience one, re- one when a student registers with us or applies for admission to the campus. So um, just to get back to, we have um, two key things that are happening. We have a postgrad preview that's happening on the 28th of June at the Hilton Trinidad, um, at the Hilton Trinidad, the conference center, and that's between 6 to 8 p.m. And we also have an open day for undergraduates and postgraduates on the weekend of July 8th and 9th, and that's at the St. Augustine campus here. So 8th and 9th for undergrads and postgrads at the St. Augustine campus and the postgrad preview on the 28th of June, 6 to 8 p.m. at the Hilton Trinidad Conference Center. And it's not going to be boring. It's going to be engaging. It's where you're going to also see students just like yourself um, who will be explaining, talking to you, showing the type of research that that's at the postgrad level that they have gotten into, the types of projects that one can do. We encourage innovation and creativity. So we're not just the old boring lecturers um, who are standing behind, you know, in front of you. Um, rather, we are standing with you to assist you to create and to be innovative and to make a difference, to be that game changer. So I invite all applicants to go to the sta.uwi.edu backslash apply and apply to any of our grad or programs today at the undergraduate and the po- and or rather or the postgraduate level we have eight faculties we have hundreds of programs they are all accredited and we are waiting to welcome you i love how you sound an objective prof but at the same time i give you 30 seconds to toot your horn why should someone involve themselves in life sciences Life sciences. Science is where it happens. Now you've opened up the door for me, but you've given me a limited time. Science is the answer to it all. In the science faculty, Faculty of Science and Technology at St. Augustine campus, we have five departments. Mine is the life sciences, of which I'm head of the department, chemistry, physics, math, and computing and information technology. That's it. That's life. We provide solutions to, for environment. We solve problems economics, we provide jobs. Uh, Socially, we we look after the well-being, that is, we provide answers when you do a science degree, as well as we are indeed potential game changers. So come and join the science program at the Faculty of Science and Technology, and especially in my department, Life Sciences, where it's living organisms that we are dealing with, and that makes everyone happy dealing with living organisms.
Prof, you make me feel like I was wasting my time, but we want to thank you very much for giving us that insight and just feeling that enthusiasm, that excitement coming off of you is really something to appreciate. Professor Judith Gobin looking at, well, actually, Professor Marine Biology, head of department of the Department of Lion Sciences at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus. This has been In Depth with me, DK Ronstadt. Thank you so much for joining us.